Hello, my name is Annie Bogart, and this is my three to five people. And today we're going to be talking about procrastination. Every single night before I go to bed, the last thing I say to myself is, I will get it done tomorrow. Every night. And it's never been easier to say that in this day and age with online learning. It's a lullaby to me. I will get it done tomorrow. You see, procrastination is the course killer of this time. And as online learning students, it's important that we address this problem now before we go into the rest of our lives. You see, I'm a very dedicated person in my education. I love learning. I respect my professors and I want to do good in school. But with COVID and being in quarantine, a lot of our priorities have been kind of rearranged a little bit. So today when we talk about procrastination, we need to address three things. The first thing that we're going to discuss is what procrastination really looks to us as online students and what emotions come with it. The second thing that we're going to talk about is finding proactive and efficient ways to positively fix these problems and to stay motivated in doing this. And then the third thing we're going to talk about is why it's important to fix this now and the two different kinds of procrastination that will help us live a better life. But first, let's talk about procrastination. Harvard alumni Tim Irvin describes procrastination as the voluntary delay of an intended action, despite knowing you'll probably be worse off with the delay. So the thing with procrastination is all about our self-regulation and the breakdown of our self-regulation. You know, being able to independently self-organize our task without any external pressure. So Deanna Kwan is a freelance scientist, and she talks about when we procrastinate, we feel pain and process it through our parietal lobe in our brain. So when we are feeling anxious and fearful about all of our procrastinating tasks, we process it as pain. So let's identify a few of the things that we really process, the emotions that we process. The first thing, if you're a perfectionist, you will not do an assignment because you'd rather not do it than be perfect. If you are feeling, sometimes as students, we feel guilt and we self-doubt our skill set and our mindset, so we just won't do it. We feel anger and annoyance with these online courses because it's difficult to learn. It's difficult to understand. So we need to identify these emotions that we feel so we can move forward. So now let's talk about moving forward. Let's talk about the kind of emotions that we face and how to proactively fix them. You see, procrastination, it's an intrinsic human ability. It's not abnormal to feel stressed and to feel anxious when you're doing this homework. But when we process this as pain, we need to find positive ways to fix it. So Florida Tech University describes the best way to really focus and not procrastinate in your online courses is to communicate with your professors. See, when we Zoom our classes, when all of our classes are online, when they're asynchronous, we have a hard grasp of reality of our courses. And we need to be constantly taking an extra step to communicate with our professors, ask them our questions, talk about our doubt, talk about our fears, talk about our perfectionist qualities. So we can have a grasp on that class and develop trust and respect with our teachers so we can move forward. Another thing that Florida Tech talks about, and Mary Burns, a senior learning technologist with the EDC, she talks about the best way to stop procrastination in a proactive and positive way is accountability groups in chunking. You see, when you have an accountability group that is a group of friends, a group of people that you trust to positively encourage you to get stuff done and to hold you accountable. See, this is why it's important is because it's positive reinforcement. When we have positive reinforcement, we stop processing the pain of procrastination as a negative thing in our parietal lobes and we just process it as something we have to do. Something else is chunking. Now, chunking is when you take different parts of your homework and you set up time for homework and you set up time for breaks. The thing with breaks though, is that it's usually when our procrastination starts. It's very important that when we have these breaks, we set times for it and we have timers that remind us. So now, having accountability groups and communicating with professors is easy, um, but the thing that students struggle on is motivation and continuously doing this. So Tim Urban, a Harvard alumni, we were discussing earlier, he says the only way that you can correctly motivate yourself is to associate the small task you do with your end goal. We all decided to do online college in a pandemic, so we need to associate our daily task with that end goal. You do a discussion board, that's because you want to graduate. You do an annoying online assignment, it's because you want to start your career. So now that we've identified our emotions and we've identified helpful ways to eliminate them and proactively motivate ourselves. Let's talk about why it's important to fix this down in an online environment and for our future. So we're gonna talk about two types of procrastination. The one that we notice in college the most is deadline procrastination. See, deadline procrastination is when you have an assignment and you have your deadline and you wait until the last minute to do the deadline and then you're fine. 
The thing is, the reason that we keep procrastinating is because this deadline procrastination cycle works. We get it done at the last minute, we're fine, we do it again. You see, we are so attuned to this that subconsciously it leads to this other type of procrastination. Now, this is non-deadline procrastination. Now, Tip Irvin describes this as the reason that humans are not living their lives. You see, non-deadline procrastination is when you want to do something with your life, but you can't. When was the last time you said, oh, I'm going to reconnect with this old friend. I'm going to start my small business. I am going to work on my health. These non-deadline procrastinations, they, we push them off because it doesn't matter when we do this. So then when we go through this cycle of this, not, this deadline procrastination, and we subconsciously keep doing deadline procrastination, we finally look and take a step back at our lives and we're watching it. We are not actually living our lives because we keep watching our procrastination and we never have the motivation to do it. So we need to stop and we need to identify the emotions that we feel with procrastination. We need to proactively and positively encourage ourselves and find study habits, accountability groups, and we need to associate the tasks that we do with our end goal in college. So that one day we can finally stop looking at our lives and stop looking at these two cycles and we can live our life. This is something that we need to do today or tomorrow.